a very good morning my dear students today we are going to see the last topic that is improvement in food resources chapter 15 improvement in food resources what is the need to improve food resources we know that we already have food resources around us right every day we are taking in what is the need to improve that so in this chapter we will learn some techniques and what is the need to improve the food resources so you know that food supplies proteins carbohydrates fats vitamins and minerals for all the requirement for the development of our body for the growth and our proper health both plants and animals are the major source of food for us and india is very populous country our population is more than 1 billion people and still it is growing so day by day the food resources is there but day by day population is increasing so we need to find a another solution to improve the food resources otherwise if the population is increasing and the people who are taking the food is increasing and the food resources are little in india people will not get enough amount of food to eat so we have to search different types of different techniques to improve the food resources as the population is increasing day by day we have to find out some alternative techniques okay so increasing the area of the land for cultivation is limited it is necessary to increase the production efficiency of crops and livestock livestock means the animals animals which we are rearing maybe fish cattle goat that all are included in livestock okay the production efficiency of the crops and livestock can be increased by adopting scientific management practices to improve crop yield undertaking mixed farming intercropping and integrated farming practices like combining agriculture with livestock poultry fisheries beekeeping etc so now we will see one by one what all things we can do to improve the food resources available in a country okay so the need to increase the food production has led to so many revolutions like blue revolution yellow revolution green revolution and white revolution so white for the dairy products like milk and other products and the and some techniques they have implemented to improve the production of milk then green for the green plants then blue for the fish production and yellow is for the oil seed production okay like this some revolution started to improve the uh, food resources so by these revolutions our resources are getting used more intensively as a result there are more chances of causing damage to our natural resources to the point of destroying their balance completely therefore it is important that we should increase food production without degrading our environment and disturbing the balance maintaining it hence there is need for sustainable practices in agriculture and animal husbandry animal husbandry means rearing of animals different types of animals for the purpose of food okay simply increasing grain production for the storage in warehouses cannot solve the problem of malnutrition and hunger people should have money to purchase the food food security depends on both availability of the food and access to it so now we will see how we can improve the crop yield okay so crop yield can be improved by three main activities first one is crop variety improvement second is crop production improvement and third is crop protection management now we will see one by one what all these things are first crop variety improvement cereals such as wheat rice maize millets 
provide us carbohydrate for this for our energy requirement pulses like gram black gram green gram that all will give us protein okay then oil seeds like sunflower soya bean mustard that all will give us fat and there are different types of foods available around us and which gives vitamins and minerals so this all uh, crops will give us a balanced amount of nutrients and some other plants are other around us they are known as the fodder crops which is used of as a feed for the cattle okay the fodder crops oats sudan grass are rice as a food for the livestock for the animals to eat different crops require different climatic condition temperature and photo period for the growth and completion of the life cycle okay so there are in india there are two types of seasons are the one is tarif season and another is rabi season okay so the crops which are grown in rainy season is known as the tarif crops and the crops which are grown in the winter season is known as the rabi crops okay so, so the tarif season crops ranging from june to october and rabi season from november to april okay so the paddy soya bean pea chin pea maize cotton that all are included in the tarif crops and wheat gram then peas mustard linseed are in the are included in the rabi crops so as i already said this crops this uh, to improve the crop yield it is divided into three crop variety improvement we have to improve the varieties of a crop then the crop production improvement and crop protection management so first we will see crop variety improvement so the crop variety improvement is done by selecting good varieties of crops this is done by hybridization this is a technique known as hybridization okay to select the good varieties of crops why we are selecting the good varieties of crops to get a good good yield right every farmer that aim or goal of a farmer is to get a good yield right good profit so if they are cultivating bad varieties they will get good yield no they will not get good yield right so first step first step is that to select good varieties of crops so that is done by a technique known technique known as the hybridization okay hybridization is the crossing between genetically dissimilar plants to obtain crops having useful characters like disease resistant good quality and high yield okay this process is known as the hybridization i will say one example if you need a mango tree which contain which should be disease resistant and also sweet mangoes okay so you are taking two parent mango one is disease resistant and another is uh giving good sweet mangoes so you are taking two parent different parent dissimilar parent and you are crossing okay then the new mango plant will have both the characters both disease resistant also and good mangoes good sweet mangoes okay so that technique is known as the hybridization is it clear okay so hybridization may be intervarietal between two different varieties interspecific means two different species of same genus or intergeneric between different genera another way of improving crop varieties by introducing a gene to obtain the desired characteristic this produces genetically modified crops we are taking one gene from which character if you want disease resistant or sweetness or anything which you like we are taking that gene and we are introducing into a new plant okay that is the genetically modified crops so nowadays different techniques are the these all are the some of the techniques one is hybridization one is genetically modified crops
Now in this slide you can see tariff crops rice, corn, soya bean, sugar cane, groundnut and cotton. And the rabi crops are wheat, gram, peas, mustard, linseed. These are the two types of see um, some examples for the two types of crops tariff crops and rabi crops. So this crop variety improvement is done for the following things. First we will get a higher yield. Uh, this crop variety like hybridization we are doing to get these all things higher yield to increase the productivity of the crop per acre. Second one improved quality. Quality considerations of crop products vary from crop to crop. Baking quality is improved in wheat. Protein quality is in pulses. Oil quality in oil seeds and preserving quality in fruits and vegetables. Biotic and abiotic resistance. Crop production can go down to biotic and abiotic stresses under different situations. Varieties resistant to these stresses can improve crop production. Next one, change. Next one is the change in maturity duration. The shorter the duration of the crop from sowing to harvesting, the more economical to the farmers okay so so that variety will be more good such short duration allow farmers to grow multiple rounds of crops in a year short duration also reduces the co cost of crop production uniform maturity makes the harvesting process easy and reduces the loss during harvesting next one is wider adaptability Developing varieties for wider adaptability will help in stabilizing the crop production under different environmental conditions. Okay, one variety can be grown in different climatic conditions. Last one is desirable agronomic characteristics. Tallness and profuse branching are desirable character for fodder crops. Fodder crops means I already said you the plants which we are grown for the feeding purpose of animals. So if it is going too tall, uh, we cannot take it. Okay, so uh, profuse branch to one is a desirable character for the fodder crystals, uh, for the uh, crops. Then the doffness is desired in cereals and the, uh, so that less nutrients are consumed by these crops. So once again I will tell what are the things we are getting if we are improving the crop varieties. First of all higher yield. Second one improved quality. Third one biotic and abiotic resistant. Fourth one change in maturity duration. Fifth one wider adaptability. Sixth one, desirable agronomic characteristics. I hope this part is clear to you. Now we will see the next topic, crop production management. So India is more second populated country in the world, right? So most, uh, most basic occupation in India is agriculture. But we can see different types of farmers. Some will be having different new technologies, new techniques and they will get good deal. Some farmers, not that much land will not be the uh, small farmers which have little amount of money for the investment and they will yield only little amount of income, right? There are different types of farmers are there. So the production practices can be at different level. The, this include no cost production, low cost production and high cost production. Like high cost means they are using different farming practices and agriculture technologies and they are getting high yields. Okay. So like that if we are giving more we will get more. If we are giving less then we will get less. Okay. So another important thing you have to keep in mind is nutrient management. First of all, we have to take good varieties of plants and animals. And second one is we have to provide nutrients. Okay. So, the nutrients are supplied to plant by air, water and soil. There are 16 nutrients which are essential for plants. Air supplies carbon and oxygen. Hydrogen comes from water. And soil supplies the other 13 nutrients to plant. 
Among the 13 nutrients, 6 are required in large quantities that are known as the macronutrients. Out of 16, how many 6 are required in large quantities? That is known as the macronutrients. And other 7 nutrients are used by plants in small quantities. So, they are known as the micronutrients. Okay, example is iron, magnesium, that all are micronutrients and which are using more that are known as the macronutrients. So, this question you have to keep in mind what are macronutrients and what are micronutrients. Example also macronutrients, example nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium and sulfur. Okay, uh, then um, micronutrients example iron, magnesium, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and chlorine. Okay, so six are macronutrients and seven are micronutrients. Mostly two important nutrients are the manure and fertilizer. Okay, so manure contains large quantities of organic matter and also supplies small quantities of nutrients to the soil. Manure is prepared by the decomposition of animal waste like excreta and plant waste. Manure helps in enriching soil with nutrients and organic matter and increasing soil fertility. So the bulk of organic matter in the manure help in improving the soil structure and it will increase the water holding capacity. Okay, so that if manure is more, the soil will be more fertile. So we can divide, we can divide this manure into two. One is compost and vermicompost. We already studied in last year and all how we can prepare a compost or vermicompost. The process in which farm waste materials like livestock excreta means cow dung, goat, uh, excreta and all things, the vegetable waste, animal refuse, domestic waste, sewage waste, straws, eradicated weeds etc. are decomposed in pits that is known as the composting. The compost is rich in organic matter and nutrients. Compost is also prepared by using earthworms to hazardine and product process of decomposition of plants and animal refuse. This is known as the wormy compost when we are using earthworm. In addition to the waste from our kitchen and other different types of waste when we are adding earthworm that is known as the wormy compost. This we can prepare in our own home. Okay, from our waste from the kitchen we can prepare the vermicompost. It's very good manure for the plants. Okay, second one is green manure. So, before the sowing of the crop seeds, some plants like sun, hemp and gore are grown and then it will be mixed by plowing them into the soil. These green plants thus turn into green manure which helps in enriching the soil in nitrogen and phosphorus. Now we phosphorus. will see what are fertilizers. Fertilizers are chemical substances made uh, the commercially. Okay. They supply nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and helps to increase the crop yield. Fertilizers should be used only in required amounts. Excessive use of these fertilizers can reduce soil fertility and also it can cause water pollution and it will degrade the quality of the soil. So, after two, a few years, after five or six years, that uh, soil have its own nutrient capacity is the right. That will go and finally it will change into a desert. So, we have to use maximum amount of organic fertilizer, organic manure instead of chemical fertilizer. Okay, because chemical fertilizer, that time they will give nice yield. But after few years, the soil quality will reduce. Okay. So now in this slide you can see the difference between manure and fertilizer. Manure adds humus to the soil thus improve structure and water holding capacity of the soil. Not expensive because it is only the excrete of animals and also plant waste. Okay, it can be prepared from the waste in the farm. It does not cause any pollution. While fertilizer, it provides specific nutrients and not present in manure. It is easy to store 
transport and use because they are compact but it is ex fertilizers are little expensive and because we it is commercially prepared okay then it can readily absorb by the plants because they are water soluble what are the disadvantages of manure and fertilizer Manure does not provide certain specific nutrients needed by the crops. Maybe that plant need uh, phosphorus or potassium or nitrogen like that. If you are adding manure, that uh, plants will not get. But if in the case of fertilizer, we can get that all things. If in the packet we can see NPK which contain nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Okay. Then second disadvantage is not uh, is that it is not easy to store and transport and handle because it is bulky because it contain water because of the decomposition of the plants and animals excreta it will be little bulky. And uh, third one is it is not soluble in water. Uh, the disadvantage of fertilizer is that overuse can harm soil fertility by making it too acidic or alkaline. So, if we are using more chemical fertilizer, after a few years, the natural soil fertility will go and the soil will become desert. Okay. So, the accumulation of the fertilizer in water bodies can cause eutrophication and pollution. Means eutrophication means these chemicals can go into nearby water and it will lead to the increase of the algae and other uh, plants which leads to the decrease in the oxygen in the water. And it will cause uh, this water pollution. Okay. So, these are the comparison of manual and fertilizer. Both advantages and disadvantages. Next, we have to see irrigation. Irrigation is the most important thing which need for the agriculture. Okay. So, the most agriculture in India is rain fed. Means, uh, the farmers know when the rain will come. According to that, they will plant. Okay, so most agriculture is rain fed. The success of the crops in most areas is depend on timely monsoons and sufficient rainfall spread through most of the growing season. So nowadays that uh, season is changing because of climatic changes. So it is affecting the farmers. So in India has a wide variety of water resources and highly varied climate. So we have to store the water. For the agriculture purpose, we have to store the water. So, in different state, they have different technique to store the water. So, some are wells, canals, river, shift, uh, leaf systems, tanks, etc. So, depending upon the state, uh, that a uh, geographical condition and the environment of the water, there are different techniques to store the water. So, the water resources available. In India, some are the wells, canals, river, leaf systems and tanks. So, the wells, there are two types of wells, mainly duck wells and tube wells. Duck well, the water is stored from water bearing strata layer. Strata layer, the water will be stored. We will dig it and we will take. Two wells can tap water from the deeper strata. Uh, from these wells, well is lifted by pumps for irrigation. Maybe you are familiar with these both type of wells. Duck wells means you can see we will dug, uh, dig the soil and we will we can see that water. Okay. Two wells means it will be little more inside the earth crust. It will go inside that is two well. Okay. The next one is canals. They are usually an elaborate and extensive irrigation system. In the system canals receive water from one or more reservoirs or from rivers. The main canal is divided into branch canals have further distributaries to irrigate fields, irrigate the different parts of the field. Then third one is liver, uh, river leaf systems. In the areas where canal falls in suction or irregular due to the inadequate reservoir release, the leaf system is more we can use the water is directly drawn from the rivers for supplementing irrigation in areas close to rivers. Then tank. Uh, in your home and all there are different types of tanks are the these are the small storage reservoirs which we use for the different purposes in our home and for the agriculture. Then big reservoirs we can see the check dams which uh, which leads to the increased storage of water for the different purposes okay now we will see some of the cropping patterns 
there are different types of cropping patterns we can see to get the maximum benefit they are mixed cropping intercropping like the different types of cropping patterns are there so mixed cropping means we are growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same piece of land okay maybe wheat plus gram or wheat plus mustard groundnut plus sunflower like that so what is the use of that suppose if we are planting only one crop in a field suddenly its price is going down maybe if they, when the farmer started cultivation that price is, was very good after few weeks or after few months if this price is going down they don't know after few months what will happen right so if the price is going down farmers cannot do anything so if they are planting two or three crops simultaneously in one field they can if one crop price is going down also no problem they can compensate with other crops okay that is the use of mixed cropping next cropping pattern is intercropping intercropping is growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same land in a definite pattern maybe one row suppose one crop like cauliflower is the next row chili uh, then again cauliflower then again chili like that that is known as the intercropping like different crops we can use okay a few rows of one crop alternate with few rows of second crop soya bean plus maize or finger millet with cowpea like that crops are selected such a, such that their nutrient requirements are different this ensures maximum utilization of the nutrients supplied and also prevents pest and diseases from spreading to all the plants belonging to one crop in a field this way both crops can give better returns okay suppose uh, if chili some small insects will eat the chili right white color some insects will be there then it will not some pest will not like cauliflower or any other thing so we can control the pest suppose if you are cultivating full chili in one field this pest can eat all things right all chilies it can eat but suppose if it is intercropping it will not spread that much fastly okay so the growing of different crops on a piece of land in a pre-planned succession is known as the crop rotation depending upon the duration crop rotation is done for different crop combinations the value of the moisture and irrigation facilities decide the choice of the crop to be cultivated after one harvest if the crop rotation is done properly then two or three crops can be grown in an year with good harvest maybe one season like um, uh, we will divide the farmers will divide into three seasons one season one crop next season another crop and after that another crop like that it will change that is known as the crop rotation okay so maximum the farmers can utilize the field the, all the nutrients will be different nutrients will be taken by the plants this is known as the crop rotation so the mixed cropping intercropping and crop rotations are the different cropping patterns which is followed by the farmers okay so these are the techniques which is useful to improve the food resources